Hi, my name is Barbara Chappelle and I started quilting in 1993. Uh, my dear friend Jeanette's mother had passed away unexpectedly in a car train accident and she was a lifelong quilter who left a quilt unfinished in the quilt frame. Jeanette wanted to know how to finish it and so she talked me into taking a quilting class with her. Uh, after three months, we had a sampler that was done that uh, I shall never forget what our instructor said the last class. Uh, she showed us how to hand quilt and then she said, give me a call when you're done hand quilting and I'll show you how to put the binding on. Well, three years later, I was ready to make that phone call. Uh, we had, by that time, I had at least uh, another uh, eight to ten quilts that needed to be quilted and I knew I needed to learn how to machine quilt. Jeanette was in the same situation. We were talking a lot. We were not uh, plugged into the quilting community at that time uh, and we both wanted, we were both struggling learning how to machine quilt. Uh, she was talking with her mother-in-law and her mother-in-law said, well, why don't you come out and visit me for a little while? There's a nice quilt show in town and um, you can take a, a long girls weekend and, and have some fun. Sounded like a good idea. The very first quilt show that I ever saw was the 1996 American Quilt Society show in Paducah, Kentucky where we obviously saw world-class quilts with lots of machine quilting on them. You know, I made a point of studying those quilts so that uh, I then went back to my studio and for the next four years learned how to machine quilt by myself. Uh, now the advantage to doing that is, is that I did uh, develop my own style uh, and I broke lots of rules at, at, you know, at the same time. I had no idea that I couldn't sew over a stitched line more than once. I did it two, three, four, five times. It depended on what I wanted that line to look like. Uh, the disadvantage is that it did take me four years before I was really comfortable with my machine quilting. Uh, my goal here is to help you um, kind of jumpstart that learning so that it doesn't take you such a long time before you're comfortable with your machine quilting um, and just kind of give you some of the tips that I've learned along the way. Now on to the fun stuff. Okay, machine setup. When you're getting ready to do your machine quilting, uh, there's a number of things that I do uh, to, in order to help me with my machine quilting. For you Bernina folks, my favorite foot to have on is a number 24. This is one that is open to all the way to the needle. It's kind of like a crescent shape. Um, but any kind of uh, foot where you can see all the way to the needle I think is, help, is very, very helpful. My least favorite one is where you have a plastic foot that you're looking over the plastic because it tends to skew your um, um, idea of where you think that last stitch is. So be careful with that kind of foot. Uh, other machine setup, uh, I have needle down position on my machine which means that when I stop sewing the needle is in the fabric sandwich. Okay. Um, that's great because the next time you start stitching, you're going to be in the right place. Uh, the other thing that I have also done is I've dropped the feed dogs. Real important because it allows me to have much more free motion. I could be moving the quilt in any direction that I want. Um, but when you drop the feed dogs, they have been dropped down below that throat plate, but they're still moving. They're down there and they're still moving. Um, you can reduce substantially your machine wear and tear if you uh, drop your stitch length down to zero. Okay? So dropping your stitch length down to zero just simply means that those feed dogs will stop moving. So, it, so it's just simply better on your machine. And we get to start stitching. This is the meandering stitch, and it's one of those that, it's a common one for me to use. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice fill stitch. Uh, I, I, however, I would say, you know, be careful not to get it too large. If you get it too large, it starts looking like mattress pad quilting, which I think is, you know, not quite so attractive. Uh, also, I am not looking at the needle. That's kind of like looking at the road underneath your tires. It's too late. You're already there. What you need to be doing is looking ahead of where you're going next. So a couple of, you know, an inch or so ahead of where your needle's at right now is where you want to be looking. I am often asked if I use a stitch regulator, and it turns out I learned how to machine quilt before stitch regulators were invented. 
Uh, if you have a stitch regulator, however, and you're just learning how to machine quilt, I would certainly encourage you to use it and just get, get comfortable using that particular tool because it's a, it's a, it can be a great tool.